Well, good Monday morning to you and welcome to our Monday morning live edition of Healthy Living South Mississippi. Live healthy, be healthy with Drs. Jim and Janine Fox of Doctors oh. Nutrition good morning. located on Cowan Road in Gulfport, south of Pass Road. Now, this is what we do every Monday morning from 9 till 9.30 live. And give you the opportunity to call in, ask your questions to the doctors regarding uh, the topic of the day, or if something uh, was crossed your mind over the weekend or since the last show that you wanted to ask them about, please feel free to call in. Uh, you don't have to be on the air if you don't want to. You can pass the question along to our operator, and they'll pass the question along to us. But our numbers are 896-0713 or 800-349-0713. And this morning we're going to talk about uh, omega-3s. Uh, Omega-3s and how they are important to us and important to our bodies and the fact that our body does not make uh, the omega-3 right. fatty acids. So well, you true. get a lot of it out of the diet. But there's times when because of the certain things that you need to eat, maybe you're allergic to them. Uh, maybe you're like a vegan and won't, don't, won't, don't want to eat fish or anything like that, and, uh, which is uh, an important um, um, uh, thing that, that we get omega threes from, mm -hmm. so um, that, that I mean, it's very important to us. Oh, definitely. Well, it's essential for life. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not just important. I mean, you know, certain things are important, but it's actually essential. I mean, without it, you know, for instance, and, and we get a lot of uh, comments about the brain. You know, we've had shows on you know Alzheimer's and attention deficit and all that stuff. Here's something to think about these omega threes. And one in specifically the DHA, which is the docose effects noic acid, 25% of your brain, 25%, a full fourth of it, is DHA. And, you know, the American diet has changed over the past, oh, 50, 75 years to where we don't eat food, animals specifically, uh, that are grown on, you know, pasture. For instance, cows now, they, they're on pasture for a while, but then they take them for the last month or so and they put them on what they call confined animal feeding operations or CAFOs. Yeah, we'll do a whole show about that. Wow. <clears throat> because what they do is, is they put these poor animals in a confined area, basically on concrete, so there's no grass. And what they do is they feed them high carbohydrate food like corn and soy and so on, which are loaded with omega-6s. So within a, about a two week period of time, they convert all of their omega-3s that we normally got off grass-fed cattle and chickens even, things like that. And we're converting it to omega-6s, which are pro-inflammatory, which are not good for us. And you know, therefore, the, when we look at the statistics on the diet change over the past, say, 50 to 75 years, uh, we see that we have went from a high omega-3 diet to a very low omega-3 diet. And we've got a lot of the omega-6s. Think about corn oil, canola, you know, all those things that, that people tend to cook with. And, you know, that's where you fry foods and so on. And, and that's why we've kind of gotten away from the omega-3. And the omega-3 to omega-6 ratio is way off. Way off. Yeah, well, well, you take, as you said, 50 years, 7,500 years ago, Farmer Brown, uh, you know, every uh, so many months, they would, uh, you know, maybe uh, uh, have uh, kill a, a, a cow. Mm -hmm. uh, they had their chickens. They're all fed. They grazed out in the field all day long, all month long or whatever. Yeah. And that fed their family for the longest right. time. Right. So, and they didn't have health issues as we do today. No. I mean, because of all the stuff that we got today with all the uh, different mm -hmm. um, preservatives and, yeah. uh, and chemicals. Uh, antibiotics chemicals. and chemicals. Yeah. And, there's, and, and um, it's, it's just uh, not good for us. No, it's not. You know, and, and one of the things that, that we you know, wanted to bring up, you know, we get an awful lot of folks that come in the store with their kids and are complaining of attention deficit disorder. Go back 75 years ago, no such thing as attention deficit disorder. And the reason was food was totally different. Mm -hmm. We got more of these omega-3s. Mm -hmm. All right, we got Cedric from Gulfport on the phone with a question this morning. Good morning, Cedric. What's your question for the doctors? Yes, I was calling to see if, uh, if, if I'm taking a multivitamin, is, is, is that really healthy for me? Is, that's my question. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, if basically, if you're eating the typical, what we call the standard American diet, or it's sad, and it is kind of sad. Uh, so, Cedric, if that's what you're eating, the standard American diet, then, yeah, you really need some sort of multivitamin to go along with what you're, what you're eating. 
And you might need a little more than that, but you at least need that. Yeah, I think a good multivitamin is good for everybody. Yeah, everybody. Um, because really, people are getting deficient because the soil is deficient now. And so even things that are grown, even the vegetables that are supposed to have certain nutrients, a lot of times right. are deficient in those nutrients because of the soil they grow in. So it's a really good idea for, I think, everyone out there to take a good multivitamin. And one of the things that we have reiterated on so many shows in the past is the fact that you go to the big box stores and you say, oh, that's a multivitamin, uh, let's say for me, uh, multivitamin for 50 plus. Uh, that'd be good. Well, if you look at the ingredients on there, it's like you're really not getting as much as you think you are, and there's a lot of stuff that in there that are fillers. I always tell people, if you look at the your, your bottle, and it has, for one, if it has dyes in it, throw it away. There is no reason to put a dye in a vitamin. Yeah, if they're no all reason. green or red or something like that, okay, yep. no. There's no yeah. reason to dye them, and right. that's just giving you another thing that the body can have a reaction to. So if it has the synthetic vitamins and the dyes, and, and I mean, the preservative list is higher than the nutrient list, get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> some of them are, really. Some of them are, they really are. Because I, I know that uh, from Doctors Nutrition, I take the Megabytes One. Yeah. And my, uh, Kim and I both take it. Which mm -hmm. is a really good one-a-day multi. Mm -hmm. um, on the Megabytes One, we have, you know, one thing that's deficient, we talk about a lot, is vitamin D. You know, we're seeing more and more right. vitamin D deficiency. Mm -hmm. And our Megabytes One has 2,000 IUs of vitamin D, which is actually a really good amount. Now, some people need a little bit more than that, but it's a safe amount to take without doing blood work um, to see where your levels are. Right. So it also has, you know, like 500 micrograms of B12. It has your CoQ10. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that are in there that are in enough amounts, and they're not dyed. Right. <laughs> no. Nope. They have no none of the all those preservatives and dyes and things like that. And it is a one a day, which a lot of people like. But sometimes uh, just that one a day may not be enough for you, right? Because and, uh, and a lot of cases, you may need right. to add uh, B12 or, right. or, or uh, some or more fish oil, fish oil, fish oil, or fish oil. the omega three fish oil, and which is what I do. Mm -hmm. um, so you know that's why it's good to come in and get some blood work done and find out where where you are deficient, what it, what is best for you to take. Uh, because you know I've been doing it for you know a couple of um, a couple of years couple now. Couple years ever since, since we I've been started doing the it show. And feels so much better. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. I mean, just just physically and even mentally, uh, a little bit. You know, even well, that's that DHA, <laughs> you know, DHA from the DHEA the that I take and, and, and the uh, that I take and the fish oil and everything. So uh, you know, I, and I'm I'll be um, about a month and a half. I'll be 60 years old. So uh, I know, <laughs> getting on up there. And but uh, you know, again, it, it's a lot about your diet. It's a lot of which is uh, I have changed. And it is a lot about the supplements that you do take. Oh, it is, yeah. no doubt. You know, and especially when you, when, you know, we get into, we talk talking this week about the, the, the fish oil and omega-3s. You know, when you look at the diet change, and like she said, you know, the ratio of omega-6s to omega-3s has, has just turned around dramatically. Um, you know, we'd like to have a one-to-one -one ratio. Right. Perfect, okay. But, you know, even three-to-one, you know, omega-6 to omega-3s would be, you know, acceptable, so to speak. And we've got things now which 40, uh, 20 to 40 to 1, you know, the, the, of the omega-6s to the omega-3s. And some people are just totally, absolutely deficient in omega-3s. I mean, when you look at what they eat, the summer, it's I undetectable. A, I think a statistic showed 20% of people checked had zero omega. They couldn't find any in the bloodstream. Wow. Totally. So, yeah, completely no. deficient altogether. The 70 to 80% were deficient. 20% had none. <laughs> All right, 896-0713-800-349-0713. Our phone lines are open. We'll be right back in just a moment. And welcome back to our Monday morning live edition of Healthy Living South Mississippi. Live healthy, be healthy with Dr. Jim and Janine Fox with Doctors Nutrition located on Cowan Road and Gulfport South of Pass Road. Uh, Stacy from St. Martin with a question about menopause. Go ahead, Stacy. What's your question this morning? I had my last cycle December of last year, and since then I have been gaining weight like I crazy. Yep. We hear that from a lot of people. Um, it does happen with menopause. Unfortunately, it, you, you still can lose the weight, but it's a little harder. But what we see when the hormones start changing, especially, um, the stress hormone cortisol goes way up because the body feels stressed that it doesn't have the hormones. And we see it in almost every woman when they first start menopause. Now, after the body gets used to it, eventually it stops. But we, there are things I would have the cortisol checked to see if that's part of the problem because that's one of the things that we see. Thyroid problems can be an issue after menopause. When those hormones change, the whole endocrine system changes. So we always say, I, unfortunately, everyone hit menopause gains some. Almost, almost everybody. I would say 90% at least. At least. But there are things that you can do, and sometimes you have to be stricter in your diet after menopause to keep the weight off, unfortunately. 
Thank you. Okay, Thank you're you welcome. Thank you very much for your call. 896 Our phone lines are open to you. Uh, we're talking about omega-3s this morning. But if you have a question, like Stacy did, uh, regarding something else, uh, please feel free to, uh, to give us a call. Um, there are three different types of uh, omega-3s, mm -hmm. EPA, DHA, LA, ALA. Yeah. And um, actually, I guess one affects at, the other. Well, if you start out, it's actually ALA is your base omega-3. Okay. Yeah, alpha linoleic acid. Now, that has to be converted into, specifically, into the DHA, mm -hmm. or docosafexanoic acid, and the EPA. Yeah, I saw that word on there, and I was not yeah. going to try to write <laughs> it down and try and to the, the pronounce one, it whatsoever. And the, and the other one is EPA, which is eicosapentanoic acid. Yeah, that one. Yeah, just call it EPA and DHA. It's, it's much easier, much I easier. promise you. Much easier. But, you know, our, the thing happens in our liver. You know, it's when you consume, like for instance, a lot of people say, well, well I take flax because flax oil has uh, omega-3s. Yes, it does. It has ALA. Doesn't have EPA and DHA. And here's the deal. Your liver has to convert ALA to EPA and DHA. I mean, that's where it's converted in mm -hmm. an animal, mm -hmm. whether it's a chicken, a pig, a fish, or a cow, whatever. That's where it's converted. Now, we don't know how efficient your liver is at that. And if you're consuming huge amounts of ALA, maybe you'll get enough of the EPA and DHA. But if you're not, if you're only taking a small amount of uh, something like flax oil, you're not going to get anywhere near enough EPA and DHA to feed that brain and to take care of the inflammatory responses in the body. That's the problem. And our, our omega-3s, I mean, they're, they are important for so much yes. of, our, oh. uh, of our system <laughs> and what yeah. they do. Well, again, you know, start with the brain. 25% of your brain is DHA. Right. That's pretty darn important. Yeah. I mean, you know, think about actually, it. Actually, EPA being one of your main anti-inflammatories. Right. I mean, to control inflammation in the body. Um, exactly. I mean, if you start looking, circulation is helped with the omega-3s. Um, tends to thin the blood just a little yeah, bit. You know, thins I mean, blood just a little bit. Keeps it from being so sticky. It's Joint, not really a Joints thinner. are helped. Brain mm -hmm. function. Heart. Um, keeping triglycerides controlled. I mean, there's so many things that right. actually are affected by the, the um, omega-3s. Now, everybody always says, where can I get it in my diet? Like he talked about, if you have grass-fed beef and truly grass-fed. Or chicken. It, it's better. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so you have to look at, at that. And organic is always better also. Mm -hmm. um, but, of course, fish and your fatty fish. And but you so, got to, yeah, exactly. You got to eat the right you gotta fish. You got to get the right it's gotta fish. It's got to be the right fish. Yeah. Salmon is great. Yes, salmon but is wonderful. you don't want to get the farm raised salmon. I mean, you right. know, be sure exactly. you go in certain stores and look at them. Make sure. I mean, it Just says. Just to say wild caught. Yeah, wild caught salmon is the best thing that you yeah. can get. And, and one of the reasons you don't want farm raised salmon is because that salmon has been fed Purina salmon chow. Right. Okay, which, what are, which is, you it, know, when you think about it, you know, it, they've, the, these salmon haven't been eating, you know, wild fish, other fish like sardines and things. Mm -hmm. They've been fed pellets, which are corn and soy and so on. Again, which is as much change, as it's going to change their composition right. of the mm -hmm. fats. And another really good fish is sardines. I mean, sardines Ooh, yeah. and anchovies, which people... I used to love to eat sardines. That's actually a really good source. They're good. They're yeah. good. They're, yeah. good. they're so great on a salad. You know, the, you, you can chop them up. And put those on a salad, they're really good. And they're, um, they also have less contaminants because when you get into fish, and if you eat too much of the large fish, you can get some of the heavy metals because of the fish. And I'm sure a lot of people have seen that. But the little bitty fish don't have it. That's why our fish oil is made from anchovies. We use anchovies, anchovies, you know, yeah, yeah. because mm -hmm. it, it's a lower contaminant. And then at the same time, we actually have it processed to take out all the, de you know, what contamination is. Yeah. So mm -hmm. a lot of times, yeah. most people don't eat fish often enough to get the amount of omega-3s they need. Like we said, probably 70, 80% of the population is deficient. <coughs> so you do have to look at, now say walnuts. You know, walnuts have some omega-3s. Mm -hmm. I use walnut oil to cook because it's one of the few cooking oils, because you can't cook with fish oil. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about what things <laughs> would taste yeah, like. So I cook with walnut oil, but again, you get the ALA and you don't get the EPA and DHA. Correct, okay. So. Elmira from Gulfport's on the phone with us. Good morning, Elmira. You uh, have a question for the doctors? Yes. Uh, the doctor said my liver is enlarged, mm -hmm. and I was wondering what was going on with it because um, I don't know if it's my medication or what. Um, and it's, it's possible that, that it's a fatty liver. Have they talked to you about that? Not yet. Okay. I just found out that okay. last week. You have to have a lot more information for us to know what's going on because there's so mm -hmm. many things that can affect the liver. 
Um, right. So, like I said, and there's things that can help fatty liver and there's things that can help liver. The liver is your most regenerative organ, which is a good thing. So once you know what's going on, find out exactly what they say right. is going on with it and come in and maybe we can help you get some things to, to you know, help it out some. Right, you know, a lot of things can help the liver function, so you just need to find out exactly what's going on. Because and it, it might be, be some diet changes things. can right. make a difference depending on what they find. So you do have to find out first what the cause is, and exactly. the cause can be different for different people. Exactly. Yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, Elmira. 896 713 Our phone lines are still open to you. You have a question for the doctors this morning. Uh, regarding, uh, again, omega-3s or, or anything uh, else in particular, but we've talked so much about the importance of omega-3s um, for you. Mm -hmm. and you mentioned about fish in your diet. What is a good, I guess, rule of thumb as far as how many, uh, how much fish you should eat a week? At, at, least three, at least three servings three a week. Servings. Three servings. Three servings a week. Of the, of the, right fatty, fatty, of the fatty fish. Okay. Yeah, fried, like cat, fried catfish don't count. No. <laughs> <laughs> how about, what, what if it's grilled? Not catfish. Catfish is not is not one of those fish that has the high the oils exactly. Yeah. So, so we're talking salmon, right? And uh, even tuna. Tuna, okay. you know, the bigger fish, you know, tuna does have some. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, caller called and asked, uh, can omega three block magnesium? Not necessarily block it. I mean, they're all used together. All these nutrients go together. It's not. A, there's not a quote unquote, you know, metabolic pathway that just says, okay, it's gonna block magnesium. No. Right. I mean if you have an abundance of any nutrient, nutrients compete, no right. doubt. So you have competing nutrients. But I mean in nature you should be getting all of them. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, okay, don't have any omega threes because you won't have any magnesium. It doesn't work that way. No. Um, you do body has magnesium is another very deficient nutrient in the body as well. So magnesium and omega three are probably two of your biggest depletions. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we're going to take a break, come back with this week's special here on our Monday morning live edition of Healthy Living South Mississippi. Live healthy, be healthy. And welcome back to our Monday morning live edition of Healthy Living South Mississippi. Live healthy, be healthy with Dr. Jim and Janine Fox of Doctors Nutrition located on Cowan Road in Gulfport. They're uh, open from 10 to 5.30, Monday through Friday, 11 to 2 on Saturdays. Jim and Janine are there Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursday. Dr. Mays is there on Wednesdays and Fridays. And as we go, we're going to break, a lady called in and asked uh, if we had some information regarding uh, uh, if we would talk about neurofibromatosis. And the, the, that's a pretty deep subject. Um, and, and, you know, we couldn't possibly get into it here on the air. Do we have any information about it? Sure, we can, we can get you some information. The best thing to do is probably is to come in the office, we can sit down, and we will sit down and talk to you about at length about that, um, about what you can do to help manage, you know, some of the situations. It's and more so about forth. managing it, yeah. not You're necessarily not reverse it. reversing yeah. it, unfortunately. But we, we will be glad to help you with that and get you, you know, point you in the direction of all the information and so on that you need for that. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and the great thing about going to see them is you don't need an appointment and there's no cost for a consultation. Right. So, uh, you know, you yeah. might have to wait a few minutes. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, this week's specials. What, well, of course, what do you think it is? Oil, right? Omega-3. <laughs> yeah. Omega-3. I take that. We're going to do yeah. all our fish oil supplements because we have liquids that are good for kids, easier to take than the big old pills. So, and, and we then, do have adults that do those right. liquids too. We have too. adults yeah. that do the liquids. So any of our fish oil supplements, whether it be the pills or the liquids, and also krill because krill is another really good, important omega-3. So what's the difference between omega-3, uh, uh, fish oil, and the krill. Well, so krill is not really a fish. It's not really a fish, right? It's more of a crustacean. It's sort of like think about a miniature shrimp. Yeah. You know, a tiny. tiny Whales tiny. love it. Whales love it. Those Whale big guys <laughs> just run around with their mouth open. And, you know, just and scooping that, it up the main all the time. place where you get it is the Antarctica. I mean, that's yeah. one of their main sources of krill comes from there. Um, but when you look at krill, you'll see that the EPA and DHA is a much lower dose. Right. And but because of the way krill has phospholipids in with it it doesn't take as much because it's so much more absorbable and the particles are so much smaller. So people always ask, we get the question constantly, is krill better than fish oil? They're both good. I mean, we, yeah. we, we've, there's really good research on both. You can take a lower dose of krill and people that have um, like reflux from taking fish oil, krill usually does not do that. So there's some benefits so, of taking krill. Krill costs more than fish oil. So I tell people, you know, well, the, you co have to fight the, the cost is more because it is a harder raw material to get. So it costs more, and yes, it's more absorbable. And, you know, you don't have, it, most people do not have the gastric problems with it. So, and it's a much smaller little pill. We have a lot of kids that can actually swallow the krill. So they're both good. 
Um, and you, you need omega-3s from somewhere, and that's, you know, two of your sources to supplement. And when most people don't get those three servings a week of fatty fish, I would say a majority of the people don't, you do want to supplement fish. Well, well, we had a caller call in and say, what about eating canned fish, like uh, tuna, can, little canned tuna, or canned salmon or something like Salmon's that? Salmon's okay. Um, if it's wild-caught salmon, If it's yeah. wild-caught salmon in a, can, in, a, in a can, it's okay. 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 Um, has some. Tuna has some omega-3s, but not near as much as like a salmon or or a sardine. Right. And you, and you get, you know, the bigger the fish, you know, we talk about something called bioaccumulation. You know, bigger fish eats a smaller fish that eats a smaller fish that eats a smaller fish. Now, we're talking about these little bitty guys like sardines and, and anchovies. Which oh, you're going to get them in a can. <clears throat> you know, well, you can get yeah, that. You can get those in a can, too. But, you know, as the bigger fish consume them, they live longer and because they eat the little fish, and they tend to accumulate things like, uh, like mercury, for instance. Yeah. You know, and so, you know, there's a, an issue with, you know, some of the bioaccumulation in some of the bigger fish, swordfish and so on. You know, those are really big fish, and they tend to have a little bit more of these contaminants in them. And, you know, PCBs, uh, in other words, polychlorinated benzene. I mean, there's all sorts of issues out there as far as the toxicity in our diet, especially when you're getting those bigger fish. And, and I always so say there's a little test you can do. Take a can of salmon, give your dog or your cat salmon every day, Not, or salmon, or whether it's sardines. Right. They, they love sardines. They love it. Um, and what you'll find, their coat gets better. They look better. They get healthier. So it just shows you what it can do. But animals tend to respond really oh, fast. Yeah. Um, people say, oh, my gosh, I started giving my cat sardines, and now its coat no, is she, so much they prettier. Go, our, our they go, would go nuts if something like So if you oh, think yeah. about it, our hair. Omega-3s play a big role in the I'm shine. Be, I'm past the, that. You know, you're high, well, <laughs> I, am way, I am way past and, that. And the shininess <laughs> and, and the more of the luster and texture and, luster, right. and also keeping moisture in your skin. Yeah. So people, you know, are asking what are the benefits of omega-3? It's also cosmetic. Um, all your diets about wrinkles, I don't care if you, there's a book written on how to prevent wrinkles, they talk about having a high omega-3 diet. Dr. Paracone did yeah, it. Yeah, Dr. Uh, Paracone. He's got several books out there about yeah. it and, you know, he talks about how just one meal of these high omega-3 fish and so on can literally change how you feel and how you look. So yeah. it was. It, it is a difference in look as well. Um, another thing we wanted to mention before, because we're about to get to the end, is most people, even if they go take fish oil, they go buy fish oil, it's a very low EPA and DHA in the fish oil they buy, and they don't take enough of it. Um, the amount that you take of the EPA and DHA do make a difference. Um, so we have a lot of people that come in, they may be taking it, but they're not taking enough to get any benefits from it. Yeah, if you look so, on the side of the bottle, it'll, it'll say supplement facts. And in there, it'll tell you how much of the omega-3s you're getting and how much EPA and DHA you're getting. And most people need somewhere around, you know, somewhere between 1,000 to 1,500 milligrams of EPA per day and somewhere at least close to 1,000 or so of the DHA right. per day. So just so look a, at your A minimum bottle. dose would be about six to 700 of the two combined, and that's exactly. minimal. minimal. I mean, that's not really to help with a lot of problems, it's really just a minimal to keep you from having problems. Right. So when you look at it, our fish oil is a little is higher in D EPA and DHA. Um, you can take a thousand milligrams of fish oil and have a low EPA or high EPA. So it's just different in e everyone. Right. Ours is the higher. For each two capsules, we have 900 of the EPA and 660 of the DHA. And that's for two. Um, many people, if they have something like high triglycerides, they need more like four. So we do actually, depends on what you're taking it for, for just basic health, maybe two a day. And of course, the best way to find out how much you need is to come in and get some blood work done. Exactly. Exactly. That's a good way to do it. Okay, so uh, anyway, uh, next week, we're going to be talking about... We're going to be talking about natural anti-inflammatories. Fish okay. oil, maybe one In, of them. Yeah, fish oil. Maybe some of others, too. Um, yeah, inflammation is one of the biggest problems. I mean, who has not had inflammation? And they do know a lot of chronic inflammation is the cause of chronic illnesses. Mm -hmm. So and, inflammation is a problem. And you know, something else we'd like to, you know, while we've got a minute or so here, if you've got a, qu a question about something you'd like to, for us to talk about, mm -hmm. let us know. Let us know. Let him know. Let, let us know. know. Yeah. Call in and say, could you please do a show on this? Because yeah. we always are looking for new topics and new things that people want to know. Yeah. There you go. Well, thank you so much for being with us today on the show. Go out and have a very good day, and we'll see you next Monday morning.